Luke, uh, Marcus isn't here, so uh, someone has to do the bloody profile. Jim, have yeah. you prepared one? Um, no. Okay. I, I didn't, I didn't you think could look so. at it like that. <laughs> or you could look at it like, who's the best rambler? He'll have to do the he profile. He hasn't prepared a profile. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, have you got a profile for Alessandro Del Piero. Oh, oh and you have now. not let us down. Look at them plumbing sideburns. <laughs> Told me I should do a profile. So I've done it. Oh, no, I've really. It's Alessandro Del Piero. Born 9th of November 1974. Winner immediately. Twenty years no. after the summer of love. Seven years after the summer of oh, love man. in Conegliano, Veneto, Italy. That's why he does it. <laughs> Alessandro Del Piero, one of Juventus's greatest ever players, the most prolific goal scorer in the club's history, and the leading appearance maker. God, he's rattling through this. Yeah. He is back. <laughs> <laughs> a truly versatile second striker able to play anywhere along the front line as well as in the hole he oozed class at the very highest level um, for me certainly one of the classiest players I've ever seen um, let's start at the beginning though mm. Um, the son of an electrician Del Piero was first spotted by scouts in 1988 while playing for his local side at the age of about 13 years old and I imagine he was well illuminated because his uh, his dad could have done the electricity <laughs> yeah, so what, on done, his yeah. body more sure. on his dad Be later like <laughs> More on his dad later They were very close um, He was wished away To join the youth side Of Padova uh, Where he eventually Made his league football debut In the no, 1991 I always thought That Del Piero Was a sort of Juventus Youth Academy product mm. Yeah a lot, a lot of people, people think do, that Because I mean, he's just So loyal to that club He is a one club man Really I mean I yeah. don't think Even Padova fans Would, 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 would dispute that I mean he, played, he ended up Playing 14 times for them And they were in Serie B At the time uh, He scored one goal I think against Ternana Although it's very difficult To get information on that I, I think I saw it And it was against Ternana uh, On the internet of the week um, uh, but in 1993 he signed, he signed for Juventus and uh, they obviously saw the, the potential in him and this is where his story sort of really starts now he appeared here and there in his first season 93-94 uh, but it was in 94-95 when his impact really began to be felt he contributed heavily to Juve winning uh, Serie A at a canter really mm. um, they think they won it by 10 points from Lazio and he scored I mean the way he announced his sort of arrival on the scene in Italy he scored a, a genuinely breathtaking goal probably one of the best goals of, well in fact I'll go as far as to say one of the best goals I've ever seen against Fiorentina in 94 it's like a ball over the top mm. He go, goes beyond the last defender And he's about 18 yards out so like To the left of the goal And you'd think oh, I'll take a touch here And slot it And he sort of Outside of the right foot Flick volleys it Over the goalkeeper the- He was um, He was good for what you might call Ninja goals yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean, real, just incredible kind of like just Death acrobatics Ham- in this yeah. mid air, snapping goals. <laughs> yeah. And and as as he celebrated, there was a massive pile on, and uh, mm. Ravanelli instigated it. Come hey. on, you got me on that. But pile on with Ravanelli. Yeah, I mean, that, that is a, a mark of respect, isn't it? That's a sort of mark of approval. <laughs> yeah, Ravanelli, Ravanelli the got, white got him off his shirt. <laughs> yeah, he didn't put his shirt over his head before he did it. He just dived on. Um, but in '95, I mean, that, that was when he, he made his first debut for the national side, actually against Estonia. Um, but he didn't score his first goal for Italy until 1990. But he, he, well, not too bad, is it? No, but he, he played in Euro 96. Get off his back. I'm not on his back, Jim. That's a celebration. <laughs> Ravanelli's on his back. <laughs> yes, he won't get <laughs> off. He's just scored. Um, he did play in Euro 96, though Italy had a poor tournament. They went out in the first round. I, th- I think he played against Russia. Um, but yeah, they didn't have a great tournament. And, and But in 1996, um, just before that, um, he, he won the Champions League with Juve, which is the biggest, um, mm. biggest achievement, really, of his club career, I would say. And they beat Ajax in the final um, 4-2 on penalties uh, The game finished 1-0 uh, Littmanen scored And Ravanelli scored um, First I think And then Littmanen cancelled out his opener But Del Piero At a relatively young age He scored 6 goals In the Champions League that season I mean only Yari Littmanen Who was a fantastic mm. uh, striker Really underrated uh, Scored more um, yeah, I remember that As much for Juventus's kit the blue kit with the yellow stars on the shoulders. Great stuff. Absolutely yeah. massive. <laughs> like classic 90s kit. They had great kits, you yeah. Remember the gold one they had later on as yes. well? Yeah. We'll come to that later. But they, had a, they got a great array of kits. But I mean, this is, you can notice a pattern developed now. 96 uh, 97, they won the league. Um, they lost in the Champions League final 3 1 to Dortmund. Um, mm. they just, Which Paul Lambert was a part of, wasn't he? Paul it? Lambert Incredibly. basically was in, in, in the Dortmund se- uh, team. Yeah, I mean, they lost 3 1. Um, Apart from the Zidane volley in the Champions League final for Real Madrid, it's hard to think of a sort of more outrageous goal in the Champions League final than Del Piero. They lost 3-1 to Dortmund, but he scored a goal where Boxic cut in from the left and crossed it, and he just flicked back heeled it into the yeah, bottom so corner. another ninja goal. Yeah, it's amazing. Like yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Peter Parker-style goal. Which is enough for him to get into the Dean Winners Hall of Fame on his own. Yeah, so he's scoring can do that a back in the Champions League final. Amazing. Anyway, but Reid got two, and, um, and, um, and they won 3-1, and, and Juve went home with nothing. But... Um, he had a great season uh, again, and the following season they won the league again. And this is probably his 
I'd say this is his best season. I mean, they, he scored 21 goals this, this term. Um, they lost the Champions League final again, but they got to, so that meant they got the three Champions League finals in a row. 96, 97, was 98. That, that was a game against Madrid, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, they lost 1-0. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Del Piero was top scorer in the Champions League with 10 goals. And probably, I, would, I mean, you can stick my neck out and say, but maybe the second best player in Europe after Zidane at that, in that season. Well, yeah. Um, were, were they together at that point? Yeah, they uh, were. You, yeah, uh, yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the goal you may remember him scoring actually was against United at Old Trafford, where he scored off about thirty seconds. Yeah, so yeah. United had the kick off. Hmm. They went through, um, uh, lost the ball in midfield, um, ball through to, to to Del Piero, who sort of like Cruyff turned Schmeichel and yeah. the defender and just sort of slotted it in. Um, it's about thirty seconds in that guy, that goal. And he didn't even have the kick off either, so it's pretty pretty amazing. Towards the end of nineteen ninety eight, Del Piero got a horrific knee injury, um, which would put him out for the rest of the season. Uh, Juve really struggled without him and ended up finish, finishing sick. I mean, he would later say that at the time it was the toughest part of his football career. I mean, mm. it, but he, he said it made him into a better player. It sort of deal with adversity. And he wrote an article actually, uh, 17 years after joining Juventus, uh, 17 things that have affected his career the most. And mm. he actually said of the injury, um, it has changed me, it has improved me. And all he did is he listed the date that it happened. Mm. So it's a massive part of his career, you know. Um, but he bounced back. Um, Juve finished second in the league the following season and they qualified for the Champions League again now by this time it's a bit interesting because they, they, they had an amazing uh, period of success throughout the late 90s with, with Marcello Lippi of course the great Lippi yeah. but by the time um, Del Piero came back from his injury um, Carlo Ancelotti had taken over and Pippo Inzaghi was very much the main man in terms of a striker there I know you're laughing already I don't understand yeah. it this is Inzaghi he's just funny well this is the thing <laughs> this is comically good at one thing <laughs> so that the massive rumours are that Del Piero and Inzaghi were such different characters just in every way possible Del Piero was a really fiercely committed sort of one club man with Juve a classy sort of you know creative in the whole second striker play Inzaghi yeah. was a, an instinctive poacher born off side of that sort of stuff yeah. mm. uh, a real sort of not a mercenary but always knocking around different clubs mm. and apparently their relationship was so poor um, the rumours all over the Italian press but they just refused to pass to each other yeah. they would only pass to each other through Zidane which is a mental <laughs> ridiculous, <laughs> a ridiculous situation but if you are going to have a conduit well yeah, exactly you, you couldn't pick it's a better amazing one conduit. maybe that's why he was sort of regarded as being the greatest player ever because he got so much ball time <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. give it to him yeah, yeah. <laughs> pass your dad the salt yeah, yeah, yeah. tell him <laughs> he should have passed to me there but um, anyway Inzaghi ended up moving on and Trezeguet basically stepped up and, and Del Piero sort of won out I suppose because he, he, he obviously studied events for a lot longer mm. um, at international level he suffered a bit more adversity in Euro 2000 where he didn't really have a bad tournament but uh, Italy got to the final but he did get a lot of um, a lot of stick because I'm not sure if you remember but um, Italy were one new up in that final and Del Piero had two decent chances to put it sort of beyond France's reach mm. Bartes had a great game he said I think it was two one on ones against Del Piero he saved um, they didn't put the, the game to bed and France ended up winning 2-1 with the golden goal from Trezeguet who mm. obviously played with, mm. with Del Piero um, so that was a bit of a shame that did affect him he's quite a sensitive character quite an emotional sort of heart on the sleeve style player and I think personal issues can did tend to affect his form and, and none more so in 2001 the following year when his father who is very close to died um, after a long fight against cancer is uh, is he there somewhere looking over? Yeah, him? not not now, <laughs> not the time. Not then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, he wasn't really himself. I mean, his mental state was very fragile. Yeah. He, he scored actually within that period. Having said that, he scored one of the most emotional goals you'll ever see against Bari away from home. I think it was. Um, he cut down the left, beat a defender, um, dinked it over the keeper. Um, obviously wanted to dedicate it to his father I mean it was only a week or two after the funeral mm. I think mm. and he's pointing to the sky celebrating but he's so emotional um, you can see Posotto holding him, his head into his shoulder because you can tell that he doesn't want anyone, everyone to see how emotional he is yeah. and he holds him there for absolutely ages so that he can compose himself yeah. you know um, so it's a very emotional scenes but I mean he bounced back again and, and, and he went on to, to have a, a sort of decent season that, after that um, and then in 2002 against Mexico in the World Cup uh, Italy had a, were having a bit of a poor tournament they ended up going out to South Korea if mm. you remember but they almost didn't qualify and they weren't happy about it were they? No, they well no not many people were um, but they, they almost went out in the group stage but if you remember Del Piero scored a header 5 for 8 years mm. scored a header to, uh, against Mexico to put them through um, and that year obviously Juventus won the won the uh, championship again and the Scudetto they've won uh, so many leagues yeah, yeah I think it's, it's 27, 27 is it something like that? that was his fourth Scudetti um, <laughs> uh, he won the fifth a year later <laughs> so, um, nice but yeah I mean due to Calciopoli I mean a bit after that it, Juventus and Del Piero had their, had their Scudetti taken from them uh, due to the scandal that was in 2005-2006 all that corruption but I mean you all know about that mm. um, now 
Del Piero's greatest achievement, I'm sure he would say, uh, again under, under Marcello Lippi, was winning the World Cup in 2006. Mm. Um, his goal in the last minute of extra time against Germany in the semi final, after Grosso had scored um, in yeah. the extra time a few minutes before that, secured their trip to Berlin and to the final. And really uh, an apt sort of um, string to the bow of his career I suppose because Del Piero he did get stick for the national team I, I think yeah. that even now there is a, a feeling he didn't quite fulfil himself for Italy um, and for him to get that goal is a proper sort of um, counterpoint to that argument I think and it's, yeah. it's great that because he was such a talisman for such a he long was. time and it, was, it wasn't a particularly good period for Italian football a lot of his international career probably between uh, Euro 2000 and that World Cup mm. um, it was quite dark days for Italy a lot of the time and so for him to, for him to get that is great it's really really good well, by this stage he wasn't even really he wasn't starting no. I mean, he came on as a substitute in extra time in that game in fact um, I, don't think he even, I don't think he featured in the quarter final um, I think he played in the second round game um, but yeah I mean, it's, I mean he's, he's a great player a classy player at the very highest level as well mm. I mean you could even argue now that he's the most talented striker Juventus have got I mean they've got Tony and they've got one or two others but Del Piero is the classiest mm. player they yeah. have and he it's always the dynamism been isn't it of him. Yeah, I mean the, the most men- what I would say the biggest juxtaposition and, and the most sort of interesting part of his career was in 2006 he won the World Cup with Italy you know he was mm. instrumental in the semi-finals I've just mentioned um, but they got relegated into that because of Calciopoli yeah. mm. and he said well I'm staying it's, that is so. That that is the work of a one club man isn't it perhaps yeah. maybe that's why people always think he he was a uh, sort of youth product at Juventus well not only did he stay he said he, he didn't sort of hold his counsel and just let his football he said um he thought all the players should stay. He said, "You know, the fans deserve this, as does the, as did the new directors." Mm. And while many players like uh, Zlatan and Cannavaro and Turam left, he stayed. Yeah, and, and Buffon as well. Buffon, absolutely. But it, the infrastructure in the club would sort of dictate that they probably would be right back up again. Oh, I mean, and they did, yeah. And, yeah. and obviously they did. But I mean, just, but just, this is a man who's who's who's, who's Playing career is, is you know coming getting, to a close. Yeah, he's getting yeah. old. He, you know, he wants to play as much top level football as he can. But he does like he does love Juventus so much, and that's mm. obviously a overriding factor. I mean, he was top scorer in Serie B when they were relegated, mm. uh, and then he became top scorer in Serie A the season after. He's the only player to have ever done this: top scorer in B and then A. Yeah, um, T- Luca Tony did it in, twice in about three seasons, I think. But it's never been done in the way Del Piero did it. Um, well, Juventus should never have found themselves in that position. Really, well, absolutely. No. But I mean, it's a weird, one, isn't it? Because we often talk about clubs being punished and fans being punished for things that individuals have done. Yeah. We are, which, I mean, I really respect the way Del Piero carried himself yeah. because because he, he felt like he owed it to them. He felt like he, he owed it to the fans and to, like he said, the new directors. He's a classy player, classy man. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. it would have been easy to just go to, to feel cheated. You know, to, to, to not know his, that his the club were cheating on your league. behalf. But even so, behind aside from all that, he still still yeah. stuck out. Like, it's just the way he, he holds himself and he, he, carries, he carries his counsel and stuff he, he very much reminds me of Roberto Baggio in the, in the same way that mm. he's got quite a classy sort of cultured yeah absolutely so he can play yeah. he, uh, play in the hole on, on the fly. he's actually got exactly the same amount of goals as uh, international goals as, as Baggio that's right yeah um, but anyway so Juventus have really struggled since Calciopi they're arguably still feeling the effects of it now um, so they've not really been up there and challenging and since then they've not won a title officially since 2003 but in 2008 he would have been 33 30 34, he was absolutely outstanding as Real yeah. Madrid in the Bernabeu in the Champions League. He scored two goals. One was a lovely drive in the bottom left corner. The second was a free kick, I think. Uh, and he got he got uh, substituted off in injury time, and he got a standing ovation throughout the entire stadium. That's a tough uh, thing to get there. Oh, of course, it's amazing. <laughs> it's a great. It's a, actually it's a great um, example of how Real Madrid fans can recognise talent in class mm. as well. Um, so yeah, that, that was that was obviously a, a great moment of, of, of years gone by, and how, how talented he still is. Um, he marked his 445th Serie A appearance for Juve, breaking the all-time club record. Scored two goals. Nice uh, against Genoa. That was on the 14th of February last year. Um, shortly after that, he scored his 300th and 301st career goal um, against Siena. Um, and in October of that year, he, he scored his 179th Serie A goal, breaking the le- record of club legend uh, Giampiero Boniperti, who is an, who is an absolute legend at Juventus as well. Um, now, on the 5th of February 2011, Del Piero became the most capped Juventus player ever. He remains the third most capped player in Serie A history, uh, behind Javier Zanetti and Francesco Totti. Um, and he recently signed a one-year extension uh, at Juventus, so he's sticking around for next I year could, as well. He could do a Carnu. Yeah, he's Imagine exactly, just yeah. kept going. Well, he has said he'd like to play till he's forty. So whether he can, I mean, he can't, he can't contribute at the level he used to. No. Uh, but he still, he's but still I mean, he might be one of those players that stays and is happy to just do twenty minutes here and there. 
You know, oh, it's, yeah. it's important. He just yeah, wants to be there, I think. And and another thing which really caught my eye when I was when I was reading up about Del Piero is that he's very well known in Italy, apparently, uh, for his sense of humour. Right. And um, maybe not something we'll get the information of across here, but he he's in a he's in a basically he's in a comedy show, <laughs> well he was called La Sai La Ultima di Totti. A comedy sketch show created by his friend Francesco Totti. What? Where the two of them, an international ex teammates, Alessandro Nesta and Gian- Gianluigi Buffon, tell jokes about one another. I think. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the uh, real Ferdinand Merkel. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, yeah that, but about each other. That's fascinating. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? Um, oh, I'd love to see that. Yeah, I'll, and I'll, understand I'll, it. Yeah, say, it's worth it's learning like, Italian. I think there's a lot of Italian sort of comedy shows around football in Italy. Yeah. Remember the one where Beckham got caught out, and, and there was, was one of was one about Latin at one point yes. as well, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, he also does a lot of work for charity, for cancer research. Um, he's very good friends with Noel Gallagher, as you guys. I like know. to think he does cancer research. Oh, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? He? He, there's nothing he can't do. <laughs> but he, he's such a good friend with Noel Gallagher that he was actually in the Lord Don't Slow Me Down video, uh, and, and so, apparently he sometimes introduces them when they play gigs in Italy, or he wow. used to when they were still together. Um, so yeah, he's, he's big, fan, big uh, friends with Noel Gallagher as well. Overall, 653 appearances for Juventus, 283 goals. He's not an out-and-out striker, obviously a second mm. striker. So he's not, he's not a real poacher. Um, Italy, 91 caps, 27 goals. Um, by all means, respectable. I mean, the things he's won, I'll be here all day telling you. I mean, he's so many league titles. Juventus all-time leading scorer. They're leading scorer in the Champions League. Um, leading scorer in the, in the Italian League. Uh, all-time prince holder in Serie A. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, the man is a true legend, uh, a real classy operator, and, and has proved himself at time and time again at the highest level. So I thought I'd end with a, with, with, with a couple of quotes. First of all, from the man himself. He says, Money is not everything. My ambition was football itself, not the money I'd make from it. If that brings me and my family a more comfortable lifestyle, then that's fine. But I don't spend my time between games and training sessions thinking about figures. Now, as is the custom on this show, I'll leave the last word to Diego Maradona. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone want. he hasn't like, <laughs> publicised his opinion about? Here he is, Del Piero. He's different from Zidane. He loves to play. He feels it in his soul. Between him and Zidane, I stay with him. Oh, Come in. Cool. Del right. Piero, everyone.